Hello friends and welcome back to A Quilt and a Book. Today I'm reading a beautiful story called Dear Juno and it's about the communication between a grandmother and her grandchild. Even though they speak a different language and even though they live far away, they are able to communicate with each other. I hope you'll enjoy it in the beautiful illustrations in this book. It's Dear Juno by Soy Young Pack and illustrated by Susan Kathleen Hartung. I hope you enjoy it. Look at the beautiful illustration. And in the very first picture you see Juno looking at an airplane. Juno watched as the red and white blinking lights soared across the night sky like shooting stars and waited as they disappeared into faraway places. Juno wondered where they came from. He wondered where they were going. And he wondered if any of the planes came from a little town near Seoul where his grandmother lived and where she ate persimmons every evening before bed. You see Juno outside looking at the airplane, thinking those beautiful thoughts. Juno looked at the letter that had come that day. It was long and white and smudged. He saw the red and blue marks on the edges and knew the letter came from far away. His name and address were neatly printed on the front, so he knew the letter was, from, was for him. But best of all, the special stamp on the corner told Juno that the letter was from his grandmother. Through the window, Juno could hear his parents. He saw bubbles growing in the sink. He saw dirty dishes waiting to be washed. He knew he would have to wait for the cleaning to be done before his parents could read the letter to him. Sometimes it's just hard to wait. Maybe I can read the inside, too, Juno said to his dog, Sam. Sam wagged his tail very carefully. Juno opened the envelope. Inside, he found a letter folded into a neat, small square. He unfolded it. Tucked inside were a picture and a dried flower. Juno looked at the letters and words he couldn't understand. He pulled out the photograph. It was a picture of his grandmother holding a cat. He pulled out the red and yellow flower. It felt light and gentle like a dried leaf. Juno smiled. Come on, Sam, Juno said. Let's find mom and dad. So here he is as he pulls out what's inside the envelope. He sees a picture of his grandmother, words on a letter that he can't understand, and a beautiful dried flower. Grandma has a new cat, Juno said as he handed the letter to his mother. And she's growing red and yellow flowers in her garden. How do you know she has a new cat? Juno's father asked him. She wouldn't send me a picture of a strange cat, said Juno. I guess not, said Juno's father. How do you know the flower is from her garden? asked Juno's mother. She wouldn't send me a flower from someone else's garden, Juno answered. 
No, she wouldn't, said Juno's mother. And then Juno's mother read him the letter. So his dad is drying the dish and his mom is reading the letter to Juno. Look at this beautiful picture of his grandmother sitting in her garden with her new cat chasing away a bunny. Listen to what the letter says. Dear Juno, how are you? I have a new cat to keep me company. I named him Juno after you. He can't help me weed, but the rabbits no longer come to eat my flowers. Love, Grandma. Just like you read it yourself, Juno's father said. I did read it, Juno said. Yes, you did, said his mother. At school, Juno showed his class his grandmother's picture and dried flower. His teacher even pinned the letter to the board. All day long, Juno kept peeking at the flower from his grandmother's garden. He didn't have a garden that grew flowers, but he did have a swinging tree. So here's Juno in class, and here's the letter pinned to the board. There's Juno looking at the flower from his grandmother's garden. Juno looked at the letter pinned on the board. Did his grandmother like to get letters too, Juno thought? Yes, Juno thought. She likes getting letters just like I do. So... Juno decided to write one. And look what he's doing after school. He is climbing up his big swinging tree. After school, Juno ran to his backyard. He picked a leaf from the swinging tree, the biggest leaf he could find. Juno found his mother who was sitting at her desk. He showed her the leaf. I'm going to write a letter, he said. I'm sure it will be a very nice letter, she answered, and gave him a big yellow envelope. Yes, it will, Juno said. And then he began to draw. Here you can see Juno drawing his pictures. Here's the first one he drew, and then the second one, and then the third picture that he drew. Listen to the words. First, he drew a picture of his mom and dad standing outside the house. Second, he drew a picture of Sam playing underneath his big swinging tree. And then, very carefully, Juno drew a picture of himself standing under an airplane in a starry nighttime sky. After he was finished, he placed everything into the envelope. Isn't that beautiful? He drew pictures to tell his grandmother a story. So there you have his first picture of his mom and dad, the second picture of his dog and swinging tree, and then the third picture of himself under a nighttime sky with an airplane. Here's my letter. Here's my letter, Juno announced proudly. You can read it if you want. Juno's father looked in the envelope. He pulled out the leaf. Only a big swinging tree could grow a leaf this big, he said. Juno's mother pulled out one of his drawings. What a fine picture, she said. It takes a good artist to say so much with a drawing. Juno's father patted Juno on the head. It's just like a real letter, he said. It is a real letter, Juno said. 
It certainly is, said his mother. Then they mailed the envelope and waited. And if your grandmother lives a long way away, it takes a long time for the mail to get there. But she finally got Juno's letter. Isn't that beautiful? One day, a big envelope came. It was from Juno's grandmother. This time, Juno didn't wait at all. He opened the envelope right away. Inside, Juno found a box of colored pencils. He knew she wanted another letter. Next, he pulled out a picture of his grandmother. He noticed she was sitting with a cat and two kittens. He thought for a moment and laughed. Now his grandmother would have to find a new name for her cat. In Korea, Juno was a boy's name, not a girl's. Then he pulled out a small toy plane. Juno smiled. His grandmother was coming to visit. And he understood all of that from his grandmother's letter without reading a word. There he is getting ready for bed. Maybe she'll bring her cat when she comes to visit, Juno said to Sam as he climbed into bed. Maybe you two will be friends. Soon Juno was fast asleep, and when he dreamed that night, he dreamed about a faraway place, a village just outside of Seoul, where his grandmother, whose gray hair sat on top of her head like a powdered donut, was sipping her morning tea. The cool air feels crisp against her cheek, crisp enough to crackle, he dreams, like the golden leaves which cover the persimmon garden. So he's dreaming that in bed. And there's his grandmother sitting in her garden, sipping her tea, next to the cat and the two kittens. I hope you enjoyed this book. It's called Dear Juno, and it's about communicating with your grandparents. And grandparents love to hear from their grandchildren. I hope maybe you'll write a letter to your grandmother and see if she'll send you a letter back. Thanks for listening. I'll see you again on a quilt in a book real soon.